What's going on guys? Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you week 9 of season 2 of the APA Little Cup League and this week we are up against Tezzy and his Wellington Porygons and before I get into the team just a reminder that if you guys like this video please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button as it helps us out a ton and let's do more cool stuff for you guys. But anyway onto the team like I said we are up against Tezzy and his Wellington Porygons who I will link in the description below I encourage you to check them out and their team consists of Yanma with no hypnosis. Omanite, Honedge, Houndour, Piplup, Drowsy, Skiddo, Spinarak, Seedot, and Goldeen. And first of all, I want you guys to make sure to not discount the fact that Tezzy is 2-6. and six. Like, his team is ridiculously terrifying. Like, holy crap. <laughs> I mean, you got the Yanma, you have Omanite, you have Honedge, and Houndour. I mean, those first four picks are insane. Like, Yanma being allowed in Little Cup is just kind of utterly horrifying, and especially considering... He has, um, he has the Piplup, which is a very reliable defogger. Like, that's going to be that's gonna be a nightmare in and of itself. Almanite, if it's able to Shell Smash up, is one of the most threatening Shell Smash sweepers in all of Little Cup. I believe only second to Shelter. And then Hone Edge is a Mon super, super unique. I really would have liked to have that Mon on my team, but unfortunately, that's not how that goes. As Tezzy did pick that up before I was able to, and I was like, crap, Honedge was would have been awesome. And then Houndour is just one of my favorite mons. I mean, the combination of speed and able to have well, having priority hit super hard, especially, and having a decent support move pool. Very, very scary. So this is going to be a tough matchup to say the least, as well as Tezzy having the option of going for Sticky Web. That being said, I do think my offense just has a wonderful matchup against him. I mean, I have the Pawnyard, which looks really good. I mean, just spamming knockoff is very solid against him. He has no knockoff resist at all. We have my Bunnelby, which once rocks are up, kind of sort of just wins, assuming no random Scarfers. But I mean, again, we have to scout for random Scarfers. That's how these things go. If I'm running a Bunnelby that's not a Scarfer in and of itself, then I need to watch out for potential Scarfers that can cut short my sweep and then my crow gunk is looking really really good so basically my game plan this week is just priority spam keep my rocks up at all cost and ultimately set up an end game where bunnelby will be able to clean up with the combination of quick attack return and earthquake so the first mon i'm going to bring actually you know what i'm going to jump over to bonds because this thing is my dedicated lead no matter what mons he brings like literally it does not matter which mons tezzy brings Bonsai is going to be my dedicated lead, and this is the exact same set that I have brought all season long. Just Stealth Rock, Thief, Endure, and then either Rock Tomb or Brick Break. I mean, just because my opponent knows what's coming doesn't mean that they are able to prevent Bonsai from doing his job, and I believe that this week, once again, is just another just another instance of that. I mean, Bonsai looks really, really good at setting up rocks initially, getting rid of an item, maybe rock tombing, reducing some speed, and just causing some overall disruption. Like, Bonsai does not get kills, but it sets up the rest of my team insanely beautifully and has done so all season. I believe it's come to, it's come to seven or eight games, only has a single kill and has died every single game, but that doesn't mean that Bonsai's contribution is any less valuable than any other member besides Bunnelby because Bunnelby is the real MVP though. Um, sorry, that was, yeah, no, I, I'm not allowed to say that. But either way, Bonsai, this matchup is no different from the ones that I've had previously. Bonsai is going to come in, it's going to set up rocks, get rid of some items, lower some speed, and just put me in an overall great position. And now you might be thinking, okay, well, Bonsai is great and all, but doesn't Piplup kind of beat that thing 1v1, especially if he's able to Scald Burn you? And yeah, you're right. And, and normally, Piplup would be able to defog away my rocks and considering how good rocks are against his big threats namely yanma and houndour defogging is going to be a top priority of his so by bonsai getting up rocks immediately it forces him early game to let piplup take a lot of damage in order to just get rid of the rocks and that's where having a second rocker in my pawn yard should be able to come through and should be able to get up rocks again while eliminating the piplup and ensuring that my rocks are here to stay for the rest of the matchup Facade is for the event that uh, Piplup is able to Scald Burn me. That way, he can't just still get a free, can't just still get a free defog against me. And then also, you know, the whole Defiant thing, being able to boost my uh, attack by two every time that he defogs against me. So that I mean, that just works out all 
works out all well and good and when i said he doesn't have a knockoff resist i forgot about the hound hour but let's be real if rocks are up hound hour is not a knockoff resist so ponyard is looking really really good and the combination of bonsly plus ponyard should be able to keep up rocks to the point where i mean i'm willing to dedicate two mons to rocks in this game that's how important they are and that's how essential they are for setting up uh, bunnelby crow gunk and kabuto to be able to win the game in the end so yeah just having two mons dedicated to getting up rocks and keeping up rocks i think is very important in this matchup next up is going to be just a bulky offensive kabuto i don't have a lot of speed just because weak armor is sufficient and once my weak armor is propped i will be able to outspeed everything on his team well except for like a scarf hound hour a scarf hound hour i won't be able to outspeed but with aqua jet i will be able to pick that thing off anyway and basically i just wanted to have a lot of bulk on my kabuto and have aqua jet able uh, or capable of picking off hound hour a weakened almanite like just things like that just i want priority spam in this game because he has he has much higher speed than i do and i just kind of had to accept that and roll with it kabuto is one of my ways of revenge killing however kabuto is also really nice for knocking off items and rapid spinning away the potential sticky web that he very realistically could bring in this matchup that is something that i have to watch out for but otherwise kabuto nice and fat gives me priority next up is going to be my main win con in my life orb bundle b with quick attack return earthquake and u-turn i have a life orb this time because the damage from life orb or the damage boost from life orb and quick attack is sufficient to knock out his faster stuff like yanma and his hound hour after rocks and then i just outspeed everything else on his team naturally so looking really really good with bundle b like honestly there's not a whole lot to say bundle b just absolutely goes in Next up is going to be my main way of revenge killing his Ammonite, as well as a potential knock offer for his Hone Edge and just an overall good priority mon in the game in Krogunk with Life Orb, Vacuum Wave, Knock Off, Sucker Punch, and Sludge Bomb. Being able to cover his team nicely, Sludge Bomb is there instead of Poison Jab in the instance that his Skiddo does have Bulk Up because a Bulk Up Skiddo actually does a decent amount of work against me and can set up on things like, can set up on like, Ponyard, Kabuto, uh, Bonsly, like he has a good amount of things that, or well, even uh, Sandy Gast in this case. So Skiddo has a lot of things that it is able to set up against, set up bulk ups against. So even though that this is a physically attacking Crow Gunk, Sludge Bomb is still preferable over Poison Jab because, let's be real, Skiddo is the only thing that I'm going to be clicking my Poison move against, and so I might as well just go for the higher more higher damaging more reliable sludge bomb compared to poison jab vacuum wave sucker punch good dual priority against his team and knockoff just good overall team support and finally we have my initial yanma switch in in my sandy gast super specially defensive like completely specially defensive berry juice so that i can avoid a two hit ko from a modest energy ball i don't believe maybe modest life orb i'm not completely sure but uh, I know that a modest energy ball will not be able to two it KO me and I can respond with an ancient power and basically Sandy Gast's only job in this game is to check on is to check Yanma be my initial switch into Yanma just keep it from being able to spam bug buzz against me and potentially revenge kill like I'm not relying on my Sandy Gast for a whole lot I just need it to check his Yanma and that's all that I yeah, and that's all that I'm going to be relying on Sandy Gast for. And then Earth Power and Giga Drain, just good coverage against the rest of his team so that nothing can try to come in on me and set up. So yeah, that is the team. And let's just go ahead and hop right on over to the battle. Alrighty, here we are in the battle. And the first thing I'm noticing is that there is no Ammonite, which is actually really, really big, considering that Ammonite was one of the few things that I was actually kind of worried about. So I can be a little bit more reckless with my Krogunk early on, I can use it to get rid of Hone Edge's item, among other things, like I can just, yeah, like I don't have to make it a priority to keep Krogunk safe in the back so that I can go for a Life Orb Vacuum Wave once Ammonite gets set up, or gets set, gets set up, or if Ammonite just manages to get set up in general, so yeah, that thing being, that thing not being here is absolutely huge, there's no Spinarak, which means that I don't have to deal with any sticky web, which I mean wasn't a huge deal considering I do have a pawn yard and I do have rapid spin, but it would be annoying nonetheless. And yeah, I mean the mons that he brought, I kind of expected, but maybe just some variation that had an Ammonite, maybe a variation that had a Spinarak. 
etc etc but either way very scary team hone edge hound hour yan or i was almost said yan mega that'd be really busted yanma just super scary but i am going to stick to my game plan i'm going to lead with my bond slide get my rocks up and just try to keep rocks up as best as I can because if I can keep my rocks up then I will be in an amazing position so turn one right off the bat I'm gonna go for the rock tomb because I thought that okay Piplup can go for a scald if I go for rocks and he gets the burn well then another scald will be able to knock me out this way with the investment that I do have on my bonsai I will 100% outspeed any non scarfed Piplup after the rock slide or the rock tomb rather sorry if I said rock slide but yeah, go for the Rock Tomb, get the speed drop, that way I will be able to outspeed it next turn, as he does turn out to be a Defiant variant, and he actually ends up having the Waterfall. So this will, of course, bring me down to my Sturdy, which will then proc my Berry Juice, bring me back up to full. Now that the Piplup is very low, this is a, an offensive Piplup, 100% with a little bit of investment. So I'm thinking that this thing probably has the Berry Juice, so I don't just want to try to go for another Rock Tomb to proc that thing's very Berry Juice. I would rather keep it at this range so that a knockoff from Ponyard would more than likely take it out. So I'm just going to go straight for my rocks as if he wants to knock me out. That's fine. I'm expecting an, a waterfall into Aqua Jet will 100% be able to KO me as he goes for the waterfall. And now I'm expecting the Aqua Jet. So I'm just going to go for the thief. And he actually stays in. Well, of course he stays in. But he actually doesn't go for the aqua jet so i'm able to thief the berry juice which will bring me right back all the way up to full as he goes for the defog and i was just like huh well now i even have more damage on the piplup my bonsai is at full health so i will be able to go for my rocks once again as he brings in his skiddo and now i'm just like well okay skiddo's in um that's just a free of violet i guess so i will go ahead and thief that thing well i mean i assumed it was a violet considering that skiddo would have to be bulky and now he's going to start bulking up on me and i'm going to speed this up a little bit just because this is going to be a bunch of turns of me just continually rock tombing just fishing for a little bit of damage while he does milk drink and bulk up against me and quite honestly I was considering trying to hard switch into my Crow Gunk right there as he did go for the Zen Headbutt, which he would have caught me. But considering I have a Life Orb Crow Gunk with Sludge Bomb, this is exactly why I have Sludge Bomb over Poison Jab on my Crow Gunk is for this specific situation. So considering that his Skiddo does not have the Aviolite, I'm still going to be able to do very, very good damage. Like if I don't just straight up Oko it, I will be able to damage it to the point where it's just easy pickings for any of my mons. And considering the amount of Rock Tomb speed drops I'm getting, I will be just in an amazing position with this Skiddo, even though it is at uh, like plus four, plus four at this point, And he does finally decide to knock me out. But yeah, I mean, I could have tried to pull the aggressive switch into Krogunk, but Bonsly had done its job. Piplup was low. I can just go straight into my Krogunk, fire off the Life Orb Sludge Bomb, which will KO the Skiddo. And yeah, now rocks are up. Piplup's low. There's nothing he can really do to prevent him, well, to prevent my rocks. Like if he comes in, as I have, like, literally the only thing that he can potentially defog with Piplup against is my Sandy Gast. And Sandy Gast isn't coming out until Yan Mega is out. So he'll have to pull a very complex number of switch-ins to try to get uh, Piplup in in order to defog and then even so I just go straight into my Ponyard and get my rocks right back up so that I do have the extra damage on the Houndour and the Yanma so I'm in an amazing position he goes into his Drowsy I'm not playing around with this thing I'm gonna go straight into my Kabuto as I mean if he goes for the Psychic cool won't knock me out if he predicts that and goes for like an HP grass. I mean, this thing might even get grass knot. I don't know, but more than likely, he's just going to go straight for my site for the psychic. I can go into my Kabuto. I can take that, and then I can fire off a knockoff to get rid of this Drowsy's item, and then I can proceed to probably go into my Bunnelby to revenge kill this thing. And Bunnelby is in an amazing spot. Like, if he does not have a Shukaberry on his Hone Edge, if he does not have Chillinberry on either Houndour or Yan, I keep saying Yan Mega. You know, if he does not have the Chillinberry on Yanma or the Hound Hour, then Bunnelby will just clean sweep. So I come in, take the physical headbutt, which activates my weak armor, which puts me in a much, much better position because as you will see, my offensive knockoff just straight up knocks out this drowsy. And so I'm like, oh, well, 
This is nice. Yanma comes in, he has to get a double protect in order to outspeed me, but it turns out he doesn't even have protect. He was a sub through attack set. I am able to knock that thing out with Rock Slide. And at this point, Kabuto is just going nuts because Honedge is going to come in, going to go for knockoff. It's not quite going to KO it. It does a lot more damage than I thought, but then he reveals to be a choice scarf as he will be able to knock or not knock me out, but still damage me sufficiently with Sacred Sword. And admittedly, at this point, considering. If he had Shadow Sneak, he was going to go for it, but I mean, to be fair, I also outspeed and I do have Aqua Jet. I was really, really tempted to sack off my Kabuto right here and go into my Bunnelby to try to claim some more kills, like to just boost Bunnelby stats, like, like sacrifice differential just so that I can have Bunnelby get a couple more kills. But ultimately, the voice of reason uh, came through in my head and I was like, ah, fine, I'll just take the knockouts, go for the Aqua Jet. KO the Hone Edge, and at this point, my Kabuto will be able to completely clean up the game because Piplup, even though he ended up not having Aqua Jet at all, Aqua Jet is still able to KO that thing before he could have potentially KO'd me, and then the Hound Hour comes in, and that will go down in one hit to Aqua Jet. And even if it was like a Pasho or a super bulky Hound Hour, I still had an insane amount of priority in the back in order to be able to clean up that thing. So that was a very, very quick game. The longest part of it was just Skiddo boosting up against my Bonsly, but I was never going to go Krogunk there. I thought about it, but I was never going to do that because that was just a choke of all chokes. Like just even letting it get set up to plus six and get all the way back up to full health was more preferable than trying to switch in my Krogunk at any point. So we are able to take the 5-0 win right there. Kabuto absolutely went nuts, was not able to bring in Ponyard, Bunnelby, or my Sandy Gast at any point. But you know what? We take those, we move to 9-0, we clinch a playoff spot, and I am really, really looking forward to the rest of the season and a potential playoff run. So hope you guys enjoyed watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.